Thank you. Um, so when you hear the word hacker, um, I have a feeling that most of you are thinking of maybe Angelina Jolie in that horrible movie, um, maybe Wayne Knight in Jurassic Park, um, maybe those kids who are trying to steal your credit cards. Uh, but that's not what I think of when I hear that word. I think of the Arab Spring and the Maker Movement and Zach Rosen and the Howard Dean campaign in 2004. Um, I see hackers as bastions of the future. I think there's a long history of people who see society as not what it is, but what it could be. They don't take the present as the blueprint for the future. And every problem is a puzzle to be solved. Every big unsolvable problem that people for years and years and years have given up on, uh, we take and break down into small enough problems to solve with code, Twitter, Facebook, a blog. Um, so what is it? What is hacking? It's tinkering. It's putting things together in your garage. Um, it's putting two things together to see what happens. It's, you know, sometimes that turns into the Mona Lisa and sometimes you just get some really smelly, oddly colored smoke. Um, Okay, bodging, it's the same thing as tinkering, but it's my favorite English word, and I had to put it in here. Um, when I think of bodging, I think of, uh, actually, Murray Wilson, um, who was up in the booth uh, working, fiddling with things. It's, it's taking uh, your toaster apart when you're a kid and seeing what you can do with the springs. It's, um, in my case, dropping a television tube off of a second-story roof just to see what sound it makes when it hits. Um, it's duct tape. Duct tape is the universal tool. Duct tape can fix anything. Tuck, duct tape is infinitely versatile, um, like hackers. We will take, we love constraints. We love someone saying, okay, you can do it this way, but you can do it with uh, three characters and this pen, and we'll go do it. Um, programmers learn to deal with constraints very early on. Spit and elbow grease. It's not easy to solve problems. Um, it takes effort. So, you know, it's not easy to change the world. It takes at least an afternoon. Um, I just like throwing food on things. Um, I'll skip that one. It takes some imagination. It takes, you know, looking at a hammer and seeing not a hammer, but maybe a peg leg for a very short pirate. Um, looking at your tools in a different way to say, I can make this something better or different, or, you know, if not better, at least different. Um, and it's got to be fun. Every, if it's not fun, you're doing it wrong. You know, Clint Eastwood said, take your job seriously, but not yourself. Uh, when you turn everything into a game, uh, there's very little that you can't do. And so hacking, for the most part, Actually, it should be a lot of fun, just figuring things out and that, that moment of joy when you, when you plug something in and that robot dances or you, you publish that line of code and your website comes alive and people can register and things happen. Uh, it's awesome. Plus, economy of effort. So the secret, I have two secrets that I'm going to tell you, and this is the first one, is that we're lazy. Oh, man, are we lazy. We tried every good programmer and good hacker tries to replace themselves with code because we all have that meaning, you know, menial stuff that we do every day that we hate doing, like filling out timesheets or, you know, clocking in at work. And I can do that with eight lines of code instead of spending five minutes to do it. I will spend eight hours <laughs> on those eight lines of code to save me five minutes every day. That's how incredibly lazy I am. So I want you to join us. I want you to be hackers too. You don't have to learn how to code, although I think you should. Um, I want you to think like a hacker. I want you to think of the big problems of the world as puzzles to solve. Make it a game. You know, it, 
it just life is so much more fun when all of these things are achievable and doable and break them you can break downable is not a word but i'll say it anyway uh, into these tiny puzzles that you can play with in your head uh, while you're trying to and failing to go to sleep um I have friends ask me all the time, do you know any developers? And for the longest time, I was like, yes, I know lots of them. Here they are. Go talk to them. And I heard back in, in resounding yowps that we're busy. Leave us alone. Um, so I decided I'm not going to send people to my developer friends anymore. I want you to become your own developer. Um, when I learned to code, I'm not going to tell you how many years ago that was, but it was before Google. <laughs> I, had, I had a flimsy book and no friends who wanted to, <laughs> to learn this stuff with me. And so every day and night was type, 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 crap, type, 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 crap, type, type. And now it's type, type, crap, Google. Cut, paste, type, type, yes. <laughs> I only got five minutes left, shut up. Um, it's never been easier to learn to code. And so there are tools out there, there are books, there's Google, there are other nerds who like to talk about stuff. You just have to corner one and get him to talk to you. You know, look him in the eye and he won't move, it's like a deer. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to break it down. This is your your inch. This is Hacker 101. Be curious. It will not kill your cat unless you plug your cat into stuff. So don't don't do that. Um, just look at your kids. If you don't have kids, borrow someone's and and let them ask you questions. And I read a, a great blog post that said every problem can be solved with five whys. So if you ask why five times about a problem, you should come to some solution. Um, that takes curiosity. Economy of research. This is really, really important. Like I said, hackers are really lazy. So we will do the least amount of effort to solve a problem. We call it, you know, you don't want to go down the rabbit hole if you can help it. Do not spend eight hours doing research before you attempt a solution spend 10 minutes doing research and then do a really small s experiment. Go, oh crap, that didn't work. Tack, research, tack, research, experiment. Um, really, it, you'll be much happier if you, because failing faster hurts less than <laughs> failing after 12 hours of writing code without testing and you're like, <sighs> your day is ruined. Um, learn by doing, this is again, don't read the whole book. Read the first chapter, go do it wrong, come back and go, ah, maybe I'll learn it in the second chapter and read the ch second chapter. Solve the problem. That's the whole point. If you're not, if what you're doing is not solving the problem, stop doing it. You would think that I would not have to point these things out, <laughs> but I do. And then share your solutions. This is the great thing about being where we are in the world is that we, ha we can talk to everybody. You don't need to be on a stage. You don't need to write a book. You can write a blog post, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Just share your solution. Get it out there. Open source and put it on GitHub and say, look at what I did. It's awesome, right? And then let all of the other nerds come in and go, yeah, you could have done that better. <laughs> That's okay. Critique is a great form of refinement. And so here's, here's the secret. Forgot what it was because my speaker notes are not up. No, secret. I'm not ordered. Okay, um, I have two minutes. Um, like I said, it's never been easier. It's just, it's expressive. Code is an art, and if you treat it like an art instead of this science, it becomes so much more accessible. It's so much more fun to go, computer, do my bidding. And it does it. And, you know, it could be as simple as, say hello to me. <laughs> and it does. And, like, that's, that's the first program you ever write in any language is, hello world. And now, like, we can write things that actually say hello world really loudly. Um, 
It's the wonderful thing about code is that it's immensely flexible, infinitely flexible. You can tell your computer to do all kinds of things. People are now making little computers that they put in remote-controlled helicopters that film protests to figure out how many people were there. There are, you know, Murray Wilson hacked a freezer to turn it into a refrigerator to save energy with just that much code in a little box. You know, we can hack physical things. The maker movement in Arduino, you can make robots with your kids in your kitchen that push balls around and solve mazes. And it's not hard. It's just fun. And so stop being scared, please. Technology is not frightening. Pushing OK will not break anything. The error message is there to help you. Just stop being scared of your computer, and please start hacking. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin.